Well, I'm so excited to share these fun recipes with you and recipes that I think incorporate, you know, some things maybe we don't think about incorporating edamame hummus is one of the recipes. So to take a step back, if you missed the beginning, I will be cooking some crispy baked falafel. So we're baking it, we won't be frying it. And I'm making an edamame hummus that is so delicious. So we're utilizing some great sources of plant protein. This week's theme is beans and lentils. But last week we talked about produce. We talked about fruits and vegetables. So I'm going to be incorporating a ton of fruits and vegetables that I got from Lancaster Farm Fresh in my plating and setting up our dish. And I'm excited to be able to share with you how to incorporate some vegetables that you don't maybe use as often or just ways to touch on incorporating more vegetables because we could always have the falafel on its own, but we always talk about adding in some plant nutrition. So we wanna add in some veggies to what we're having. So to start, I preheated my oven to 400. It is nice and toasty. We're gonna get that ready for our falafel. I'm gonna start with the falafel recipe before I make the hummus and it is super simple. So. I know a lot of people will ask me for weeknight meals or meals that don't take a lot of prep. This is one of them. You need a blender or a food processor, and then you need a baking sheet and an oven. And that's pretty much you know, the extent of those tools you need for the kitchen. So it's one of those toss it all in, then set it and forget it kind of recipes. So I have my blender here. I'm just gonna use a large blender to combine everything. I'm starting with my chickpeas. So this is one can of chickpeas. I drain them, I rinse them, and then I let it sit for a little bit. I came back and I rinsed it again. I just like to give them a good, nice rinse. And I kind of let them dry out a little bit just so that they're not too wet. You don't want too, too much moisture to be in the spatter, or sometimes they just kind of fall flat a little bit, which is fine. You can still totally enjoy them that way, um, but just as a word of caution. So in my blender, I'm gonna put this entire bowl of chickpeas. What a satisfying sound pouring that into the blender. All right, and so I have half of an onion here. I got this onion from Lancaster Farm Fresh. It is beautiful. And so what I'm gonna do is with the half the onion, I'm going to cut the end off first. So it just has a little flat bottom and then I'm gonna cut it in half. So I want this to be a rough chop. When we put it in the blender, it's gonna help chop it up a little, but I know that I don't want a huge, huge chunk of onion in my um, falafel. So I just wanna cut it up a little bit smaller. So I cut it in half in the middle and I just cut it lengthwise. And now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna cut it again. So it's, it's kind of like a puzzle putting it together, but you'll see it creates beautiful small pieces of onion. And I'm all about being flexible in the kitchen. So whichever way you cut an onion and whatever way works for you, works for me. All right, so I've got all this. Be careful of your fingers as always. I like to leave the top on because it helps keep it all connected, but also it's a good place to rest your fingers while you're chopping. Okay, so I'll show everybody what it looks like when I did my little chopping method. So we've got some small little pieces of onion. So I'm gonna go ahead, I need about a half a cup, but I don't really mind too much onion. So I don't want anything to go to waste. So I'm gonna use the rest of this onion and put it in here. While we go along today, I just wanna highlight some, some affordable eating or affordable cooking techniques or things to think of, just because I know that with the rising price of groceries these days, you know, wherever we can save is great. So this is one of my little tactics, you know, even if a recipe calls for half a pepper or half an onion or something like that, I usually find a way to either use it in another recipe or I'll just add it to the recipe I'm making because I don't want it to go to waste. I know that if I put it in my fridge, I might not remember that I put it in there and then it might go bad. All right, so I'm just gonna give my hands a rinse, get the onion off. All right, so I have here a lemon and a zester. I need about a teaspoon of zest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go around, I'm gonna zest most of this lemon. And later when we make our hummus, 
I'm going to be using lemon juice. So it's a good way, multi-perfect way. I'm using the zest, I'm using the juice, really getting the most out of this lemon. All right, so I'll go ahead. I got most of the zest off of there. You know, don't go crazy. You know, you don't have to get every inch of zest off and you just wanna zest it down until it's a light pale yellow color. When you start to get to the white and the membrane, that's when you've zested off most of the exterior. So just leaving it at a nice pale yellow color is perfectly fine. All right, so I've got my chickpeas, onions, I've got my zest in there as well. I'm gonna put in a couple different herbs and spices now. I have some cumin and I'm very excited to show everybody this. I got this as a holiday gift. These are measuring spoons that stick together. So if anybody is a kitchen geek like me, you can get measuring spoons that stick together so you don't lose them. So I'm going to put in cumin. I'll start with that. I'm going to put in a teaspoon. So let me sift through these. All right. And I'll put in a teaspoon of cumin. And if you are thinking of these spices and you're like, I don't know if I like this, or I would add that, go for it. I want you to definitely be flexible while you're in the kitchen and make recipes your own. Make recipes, you know, what you like. All right, so there's the cumin. I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of coriander as well. All right. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna put in about three quarter teaspoon of salt. I might put a little bit less in just because I don't always like things as salty. Or if you're watching your salt or your blood pressure, you might wanna put a little bit less in. Totally play it by ear taste wise. So I have a three quarter measure. I'm just gonna do a little bit less in there. All right, I'm also going to add in a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. If you don't like spice or you have any reflux issues or you just don't really like spice, you don't need to add the cayenne, it's completely optional. I do like things spicy, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. It's not too overwhelming of a spice, I will say that. All right, I'm also going to add in a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. This just helps when we put them in the oven to make sure that they don't kind of flop down. So I'm gonna measure out a quarter teaspoon of my baking powder. Perfect. All right, and I'm gonna also add in a tablespoon of olive oil. All right. And last but not least, I love garlic, fresh garlic. So I am going to add in about three <clears throat> cloves of garlic. I really love garlic presses because it takes a lot of the work out of the garlic. You don't have to chop it, you don't have to peel it. So I'm gonna go ahead, I put the whole clove in and I'm gonna just press that. <clears throat> and a fun tool that came with this is it also is a leveler. So I'm gonna use that to kind of scrape off my garlic. All right, and then the only thing is you have to peel the old garlic out, but it's not too bad versus having to chop up garlic. Now, if you wanted to use, you know, the minced garlic that's in water at the store, absolutely fine as well. Or the garlic paste that they have at the store, that's a good option. You can even omit the garlic if you don't like the garlic flavor or you could add more. Again, all about flexibility in the kitchen. So whatever works for you. All right, last clove. Aubrey, I think most of us here this evening are going to be doing some kitchen tool shopping between the garlic <laughs> press and the magnetic measuring cups and spoons. A lot of interest here. A lot of in Oh, lot yeah. Of <laughs> I wish I could tell you where the magnetic spoons are from. I can ask the person I uh, received it from, but that was such a joy opening those <laughs> and seeing that. I wasn't going to lose my spoons anymore because they would all stick together. <laughs> oh, it's the little things. It is. It is. 
Uh, any questions before I hop into blending this up? Anybody have any questions? All right. Yes, the recipes are ideal. They are shared on the website now. You can actually view them already. Um, so if you wanted to look while you're cooking along, um, it should be under our planchuary page. It's the crispy baked falafel and the edamame hummus. Um, and I can also share them at the end as well so that we have them. All right, so I've got all my ingredients in here. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put the lid on my blender. Before I go ahead and blend this, I'll tell you, I don't want it to be completely pureed. I want to pulse it and I want it to be mostly blended, but I want some little chunks in it because that's kind of what gives falafel its delicious texture. So I'm gonna give it a couple pulses and then I may take my spatula and kind of mix it around. All right. So I can see the bottom is starting to become a little bit more pureed. The top, we still have some chunks. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna push, push this down in. And what I'm also gonna do now that this is blended up just a little bit, I'm gonna add in some fresh herbs to really, really brighten it and bring it home. So I have some cilantro I got at the store, but I also have some beautiful parsley that was given to us by Lancaster Farm Fresh. So I need about a cup of each. I'm just gonna give it a rough chop. You could honestly put it in completely whole. I just think for blending, it's gonna make it a little bit easier and quicker if I just give it a little rough chop. So there's our cilantro. We have our parsley too. So one kitchen tip to reduce waste. When you have fresh herbs, store them how you would store flowers. So you can trim the bottom a little bit and put them in a glass of water. And that really helps to extend the life of those. Similar things that it works with, if you have carrots or celery that have maybe gone a little limp and they're not looking as good, you can cut some off and put it in a cup of water, give it a little time in the fridge and it'll absorb that water and it kind of reinvigorates it and gives it a little bit more life. All right, so got my herbs in there. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a couple more pulses. All right. So I'm gonna take a second and I'm just gonna give it a mix. Again, I don't want everything to be completely pureed. I want a little bit of puree, but not the whole thing. So I'm gonna try to mix in my herbs so that they get a little closer to the bottom so that as we blend it the next time, they're getting a little bit more integrated. So I'll show you what this looks like too. It's not very pretty, but I will show you what it looks like. So there's our falafel mixture. You can see a lot of the herbs now, but I'm gonna give it a blend and it should blend together and hopefully get this nice green color to complement with the herbs. Right. And I'm going to give it just a couple more pulses for good measure. All right. Now, I know I said that I was going to leave some chunks in. If you're thinking, I don't know about the texture of that, you can absolutely blend it all the way, pulse it all the way if you need. Or if you get to this point and you start making them into your falafel balls and you're thinking these are way too chunky, you can always put it back into the blender or food processor. So I have my baking sheet. I've just got some parchment paper on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to first take out the blade, keep my hands safe in my blender. And I want to make sure I'm getting all this goodness. So I'm going to go ahead and take my spatula, make sure I'm not wasting anything. Aubrey, I have a quick question for you. If, if we are yes. blending at home mm -hmm. and it is a little bit, if we feel like it's a little bit dry, so it's not blending well, would we add a little liquid? Would we add a little olive oil, a water? Yeah, yeah. Recommendation? I would say add a little bit of olive oil, um, just a little drizzle. Or if you're kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to add a little bit more oil, you could substitute for water as well. 
when I go to cook these, I'm going to give them a little drizzle of olive oil to help, help keep them hydrated. So whether you use water or olive oil in it, it'll help keep in that moisture. But yeah, if it's feeling a little dry, you could certainly add just a little bit at a time, you know, a little splash at a time. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So here's our chickpea mix, a beautiful greenish color. All right. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to form these into some balls. I'm not going to press too hard because I don't want them to be too compact. Just going to loosely form them into balls. It should make, which I don't always go by this, but it should make about 12 to 15 falafel balls. If you are putting them on the plate or on your baking sheet and you've got 10, I don't want you to feel stressed out that you have to spread out, you know, and to get two more. Or if you make 20 because they're a little bit smaller, that's completely fine. That's just kind of a, a guide for when you're thinking about how big you want to make them. The recipe calls for about a two tablespoon measure. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I like to save as many, you know, uh, utensils and things as possible. So I don't mind being a little bit messier in the kitchen. All right, while I form these into patties or the little balls, does anybody have any questions? If you wanted to substitute, if you didn't like chickpeas, you could certainly substitute for a different bean. It'll have a similar texture, just a little bit different flavor. So if you are not a big fan of chickpeas, although I hope everyone is after hearing that food for thought because they are so good for us, um, you could always swap it out with something else. And same with our recipe that we have coming up. So I'll be making an edamame hummus. So if you wanna swap that with something different, a different bean, absolutely up to you. All right, I'm just making a little space here. I think it's gonna turn out to be 12. Can you, uh, can you freeze these? Yes, absolutely. If you put them in the freezer, I would just make sure to put a date on them when you go to freeze them so that you know when you put them in the freezer because I know that I put things in my freezer and completely forget when I um, used them or put them in. So put a date on it, use some packing tape or some painter's tape, and I would keep them for um, up to about three months in the freezer, but they're perfect to freeze and make later or use later. Perfect. And we do have a question from Linda, which I mm -hmm. second her comment as well. She said, how many are a serving size? She could eat the whole thing. <laughs> Good question. I would say about two for a serving size. Um, they do turn out, you know, on the larger side when they spread out, two or three for a serving. Um, would get you a lot of that protein, get you that boost from the antioxidants in the herbs and spices, um, and that'll make a good fulfilling dish. So when we make our little pitas later, I'll put probably three. We'll play it by ear with size, um, but I would say two or three for, for a serving. But if you want to eat the whole plate, they have so many nutrient-dense foods in it, I would say, you know, let your heart be happy and uh, have those falafel. All right, any other questions before I pop these in the oven? We do I have out I made 11. We do have one more. Um, we had a question. Um, Janice says she loves hummus and chickpeas, but they tend to bloat her a bit. Any tips on dealing with that? Yeah, good question. So a lot of times I hear from people when they start to make these changes and integrate more plant foods that they do deal with some bloating because those foods have more fiber. So we're gonna take longer for that digestion. So I would say a good tip is just incorporating them in a little bit at a time. So, you know, something like this that has a lot of chickpeas, maybe starting with a small portion, you know, having, you know, one or two and seeing how you feel, making sure you're staying well hydrated as well so that you're kind of keeping everything moving throughout your body, but getting in that variation of the insoluble and soluble fiber in different forms, and just trying to take it a little bit at a time. You know, it's one thing to go from zero to a hundred and start having so many fibrous foods, but we want to think about, you know, treating our gut well and giving it time to adjust. Love that. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Any tips from you, Erin, too? 
No, I mean, I would say exactly, exactly what you said, but, you know, hang in there, um, give your time, body time to adjust and, uh, yeah, definitely check portions. So yeah, so good. So good for our microbiome. Yes. So good. Um, I just put it in and pulled it out because I remembered I was going to put a little bit of olive oil, just drizzle it across the paper, helps to just keep it hydrated, really an optional step. Um, I just think it, it's kind of like a nice touch. So I'm going to put these in for about 14 minutes. And then at 14 minutes, I'm going to take them out and I'm going to flip them over. And then I'm going to cook them on the other side for about 11 or 12 minutes. So I won't make everybody stay because I know that will be well past the time that we are uh, leaving this evening, but I have some that I'll show you what it looks like as well. I'm gonna really quick go ahead and make that edamame hummus so you all can see what that looks like. So I have, this is why I love the blenders that have multiple cups because I don't have to wash the blender. I have a small cup that I can use for this edamame hummus. I'm going to start with a couple ingredients I have over here. I'm going to start with tahini, which is sesame paste, and the lemon juice. I'm going to put in a third a cup of each. So I get this tahini paste. I like it because it comes in a squeezy bottle. Sometimes with tahini, it's kind of similar to if you've ever had maybe a nut butter that you have to give it a really good hard mix for it to be the right consistency. Tahini can be the same way. So I like this squeeze bottle because it's just easy to use and it's easier sometimes than um, having that big jar. All right, so I have about a third a cup. And then I want a third a cup of lemon juice. So that's about two to three lemons. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those. I like to squeeze upwards so that I can hold the seeds in my hand. You could also use something like this. I have a juicer. It's the same uh, mentality. You just wanna squeeze out all the juice. This can kind of help to get a little bit more juice out because you're really kind of hollowing out the inside of the lemon. And so if you see that lemon, you know, there's not much left in there. So I'm gonna try to get about a third a cup of juice. And I'm using the lemon that I zested. So I'm using this, plus I made the recipe earlier. So I'm using the lemon that I zested earlier because I wanna make sure that I am reducing any waste. All right. And this is a really good, simple snack to have. So a lot of times I get the question, you know, how can I get in more protein throughout the day or how can I get in protein from plant foods? Hummus is a great way to do that. Hummus, like our chickpeas, usually has a lot of protein and fiber. Edamame, same thing. We've got a lot of protein in there. All right, so let's see, I've got about a quarter cup. So I'm gonna take one more lemon. I brought out a bunch just in case. All right, and we'll try to get about a third a cup of juice. It's a really bright hummus. So got a really delicious flavor. All right, so I've got about a third a cup of juice here. Take my lid off. I'm gonna pour my juice in. All right, and I'm also going to revisit my garlic press and I'm going to put in a clove of garlic. Again, same thought as before. However you like to use garlic, go ahead. This calls for one clove. You could use more than that. You could use the garlic in the jar, whatever works for you. All right. So I've got that garlic and I'm just going to whip this up a little bit first as my first step just because I want all of these ingredients to be incorporated. So I'll go ahead, I'll put that lid on and I'll give it a blend. Right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in about half of the edamame. So you need about a cup and a half. I have it here. I just bought frozen edamame earlier and I microwaved it. So I bought a frozen bag of edamame and that's what I'm using. 
So I'll put in half. And I want to put in about a tablespoon of water just because I want to make sure it's thin enough. Water is going to be our friend in this recipe. If you need to add more, add more. Don't feel like you can't. All right, so I'll give that a blend. And so this will definitely need a little bit more water. I'm gonna go ahead and put in about a tablespoon or so more. I'm next to my sink, so I have that benefit. I can just go ahead and use the faucet there. Could right. you could you use any kind of bean for this or any kind of white bean instead of edamame or a blend of them? Yeah, absolutely. Whatever beans you really enjoy. I could see it with black beans or white beans or chickpeas or a mixture of multiple beans. You could certainly do, you know, whatever tastes good to you. Absolutely. Great. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give this another blend. Getting a lot smoother. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the edamame. I'm just gonna add it in first and see how the thinness is. If I need to, I can add some water. I'm also gonna add a little drizzle of olive oil as well. We want in, in total about three or so tablespoons. So I'm gonna go ahead, drizzle in my olive oil. You can see the pretty color already. I know, it is so beautiful. And this is so light compared to what it'll get because we're gonna add in some cilantro too which will really brighten it up. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, blend this up. All right, I'm gonna give it a little shake. And it looks a little thick. So I'm gonna go ahead, gonna add my water. Again, water is your friend in this uh, recipe. But you want to make sure you always add a little bit at a time. You can always add more water. You can't take water out. So making sure you keep that in mind. All right, beautiful. And last but not least, I'm going to add in my cilantro. You can also add some herbs and spices that are dried if you'd like you know, add in some salt, add in some pepper, add in some cumin or some garlic powder, whatever feels right. So I need about a half a cup. This one I'm gonna be a little bit more loose with. I'm just ripping it off and I'm putting it into the jar. All right. So I'll go ahead and put that lid on and give it one final blend and then we'll get ready to assemble our falafel pitas. All right, so you can see it is this nice, beautiful green color. It is so delicious. It has a ton of flavors in there. So I'm going to get ready to show you kind of how to assemble your falafel pita in a way that's going to enhance your veggie intake. So I have here my plate. Let me clean off a little bit before I set it down. I have some whole wheat pitas on here. So whole wheat, meaning that it's got the whole grain in there. It's going to have a little bit more fiber than our white products. So it's a, a good healthy upgrade that you can make and still have these fun foods like these pitas. So I'm going to take this. I personally struggle opening the pitas. So I'm going to make it into more of like a pita taco, plus I feel like I can get more food on it in that way. So I'm first going to slather on some of my edamame hummus. So I'll even show you what that looks like on here. And I'm gonna be a little liberal with it because this hummus is so good. You can see this beautiful green color. Just gonna go ahead and spread it out. Then I'm gonna take some of my Lancaster Farm Fresh veggies and I'm gonna take it up a notch. So this is where you can make those healthy upgrades. You can just add in 
some really simple things that are going to make it so tasty and increase the nutrient profile. So I have some multicolored carrots. I have some beautiful watermelon radish. I'm just gonna give it a little peel. And then I'm just gonna take a couple pieces and put it onto my pita. So I'll show you what watermelon radish looks like if you haven't seen it before. It is beautiful, multicolor. You can always pickle the radish if you'd like. I did make some quick pickled cabbage with the cabbage that I received from Lancaster Farm Fresh as well. For that, you just need to mix up some water and vinegar in equal parts with a little bit of salt and sugar. You just leave it for a little while sitting in there so that it can really brine up. All right, so I'll take one more little slice. All right, perfect. I also have some rainbow carrots. I think I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go with this purple one. I'm gonna peel it and what I like to do or what I think is fun is taking it in little strips. I feel like it almost feels fancy. So I'm gonna take my peeler, peel a little bit off like a little strip and that's what I'm going to use on my pita. And then you don't have to chop it up. I feel like it takes out one step of the equation too. So I'm all for anything that gets you to dinner a little bit faster. All right, so I've got my carrots on there, my radish, my hummus. Last thing is I have those pickled cabbage that I told you about before. So I made that earlier. And what you wanna do is you just wanna leave it for a little bit of time, ideally about 48 hours, but even if it's the start of making dinner versus the end of making dinner, they'll still have a good pickled taste. So I'm gonna take some of my pickled cabbage. I'll put that on top. All right. Be a little light if you haven't had it before or try it out ahead of time, just so that you know what the flavor is. It does add a really nice flavor that really, I think, pulls everything together. All right, and last but not least, I'm gonna add some baby greens. There's some baby chard in here. Again, we're just taking it up a notch with nutrition. We're adding in more veggies, adding in more plant proteins with our beans. All right, and I've got my falafel that I made earlier. So this is what they look like when they're done. They are good, nice and crispy. You can see they're brown on the outside. And I know we have the question about how many. I'm gonna put three on. <coughs> and that perfectly fits on our pita. So I'll show you what it looks like open face. So this is our open face pita sandwich. You could stuff the pita if you would like. I like it again as a taco kind of helps hold everything in while you're eating it. Again, a great easy weeknight dinner, two components that are very versatile. The falafel, you could freeze it and save it, or you could use it right away. You could have it in many formats, even just packing it as a snack or to have with your breakfast or lunch or dinner. And then the hummus, great snackable, high protein. It's got edamame, so it's got that plant protein in it. It's got the punch from the antioxidants of the herbs, the fresh herbs. So both very plant-powered recipes and served in a really plant-powered way. So I hope that this has inspired you all for Plantuary to incorporate plants in a new fun way. We've got tons of really great recipes for Plantuary. One of them is even a dessert recipe, chocolate hummus. So I heard we had a lot of uh, hummus lovers here. So trying out the chocolate hummus recipe, definitely. And send us your pictures, sign up for the Plantuary Pledge. So let us know how you plan to partake in Plantuary. And we're just so thankful that you spent tonight to hang out with us, learn a little bit more about some great organizations and learn how to eat more plants. Oh, thank you, Aubrey. That was amazing. and. Literally, everybody's like, I can't wait to make it. That looks amazing. <laughs> I think you've captured some people with the chocolate hummus as well. Yes, great presentation all the way around. Lots of great information shared. This was wonderful.